How's that? So, w- what was your uh, motivation to get back in there? Uh, you know, was it redemption? Depends on how you describe redemption. It, w- it wasn't redemption in the fact that I'm going to show all these guys, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, redeem myself to other people. I wanted to redeem myself to me. I couldn't, I never could get over what happened. It haunted really? Me. Oh yeah. It haunted me. You have no idea the shit I took. I mean, it was crazy. You know, I didn't have internet at the time because internet's new. I lived up in the tundra of Northern Minnesota and, and we didn't, you know, we barely had electricity and, and, and running water up there in those days. But when I, I got a job in 1997 for a school district and, um, that was the first time I had any internet access and email access. And a buddy of mine had been telling me, he said, man, he said, they're really hard on you on, on this internet thing. And uh, some of these, you know, what they call chat rooms and everything else. And he said, they're really, really getting after you. And he would start showing me things when we got together. And I was like, man, they're just a hateful, hurtful things that they would say. Okay. Uh, so, so, so Fred, why do you think there were people in that tournament that showed much worse than yourself. Why do you think that that was geared, like that type of energy was focused at yourself? I, I have never understood it. And to this day, I do not understand it. Uh, you know, it's, I, 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 you know, criticism is fine. I'm okay with that. Hell, I stunk. I knew it. I, I had, a, had a terrible night. Well, well wait here. Wait, wait, no, wait. Did, well, Let me interrupt. You. Did you actually stink? Or are you just somebody that, was not training for the proper contest. Do you know what I mean? There's a big difference between those uh, two. It was it was both. I mean, my 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 performance was atrocious, uh, and I had never, I hadn't trained for an event like that because I didn't know what an event like that was. Um, but as a martial artist, I should have not allowed myself to become overcome by a fast changing situation. You see, the the, the thing, it's not self defense. But yet it was a real fight. And it's, uh, I have been in a few, <clears throat> few, few fights where things just happen and you don't have time to think and you react. And I did fine. But in this instance, I had just enough time to think and to become overcome by the whole enormity of the event. And like I said, I'm a, I'm a reclusive person. I'm a private person being in front of all those people having a camera in your face as you're walking down there, walking through the artificial smoke, that kind of stuff just freaked me out. And I should not have let that happen. And, you know, could, could I have won a fight on the ground with Hoyce Gracie? No, absolutely not. You know, I, and I understand that now that, you know, if the fight went to the mat <clears throat> with, with Hoyce Gracie, he would have submitted me easily, but I trained to not go to the mat. And I understood joint locks. We did joint locks all the time in, in our style of karate. It's not just punching and kicking. There's a lot of joint locks, manipulations, wrist locks, arm bars, chokes, sweeps, takedowns, <clears throat> the, the, you know, the whole gamut. It's just that on that well, we did not train to stay on the mat. We trained to get up or not be down there in the first place. And I failed at that. You know, I, I should have, you know, I was fighting a stand-up fighter. And so I, there, there was no reason, there was there's no excuse for me. To have fought so poorly. Well, I don't think there's any shame in saying that there was, it was an enormous event.